Since the original Greek and Hebrew texts are the foundations of the KJV is built upon, it seems important to me to ask if they have changed as well. Does anyone know? Thank you. Ecclesiastes 3.15 What is has already been, and what will be has been before, and God will call the past to account. I mean, if the past is being called to account, it seems like there should be no new changes to the text. Yes, they have changed, I believe, at a slower pace. I recommend reading the Jewish, Greek, Septuagint, and the Kalani Greek, the Texas Receptus for general study. That being said, in my opinion, the days are turning to any book or manuscript for relief from the Bible changes is futile. Still, actively study, but I recommend <coughs> putting more emphasis on prayer with God along with personal praise and worship. John four twenty three through 24 Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is Spirit, and His worshippers must worship in Spirit and in truth. Matthew 4, 4 Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Matthew twenty four thirty five. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Isaiah 48 The grass withers, and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. So, this just doesn't seem like things have been changing to the ancient texts. Thanks for the comment. My thinking was that if it would be nice if it had, has not already been changed, so that it would be easier to build a consistency on changes rather than rely on memory alone. I think prayer is so important now as much as ever. Deuteronomy 31.6 Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews 13.7-8 Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life. And imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, and today, and forever. Yes, memory can be faulty. Romans 3, 2-6 through six, Much in every way, first of all, the Jews have been trusted with the very word of God. What if some were unfaithful? Will their unfaithfulness nullify God's faithfulness? Not at all. Let God be true, and every human being a liar, as it is written, so that you may be proved right when you speak and prevail when you judge. But if our unrighteousness brings out God's righteousness more clearly, what shall we say, that God is unjust in bringing his wrath on us? I am using a human argument. Certainly not. If that were so, how could God judge the world? What I have found is that most of us are filled with the Holy Spirit. First John 4, 1 through 6 Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see if, whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. Which is, you fair heard, is coming and even now is already in the world. You don't, don't children are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. John 10, 1 through 5 Very truly I tell you, Pharisees, Anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought them out all, out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. 
but they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize the stranger's voice. The Holy Spirit truly brings the scripture to remembrance. John 16, 12 through 15. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear, but when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. Luke twelve eleven through 12 When you are brought before the synagogues, rulers, and authorities, do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you will say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. Luke twenty one twelve through 15 But before all this, they will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and put you in prison, and you will be brought before kings and governors, and all on account of my name. And so you will bear testimony to me. But make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves, for I will give you words of wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict.